obviously you couldn't go up there to film, so you had to train the astronauts to use the IMAX camera, and then they filmed it. Um, were you nervous at all, just sort of giving up control that way? Not at all, because astronauts are brilliant people. They are the best learners in the world. That's why they're astronauts. And they're absolutely wonderful to train. So um, we train them to be directors. Um, and you know that they're not going to do a crummy job. They're very, very success-oriented people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we train them for about eight months in advance. Um, we train them to, as best we can, to choose the right moment. You know, there's no black and white in this business. It's, it's sort of degrees, but uh, uh, we teach them all about exposure and, and um, uh, focus. And we, train, we, do, we get them to shoot some training footage with an IMAX camera so they can see the consequences of pushing the button because they get to see their own rushes, their own dailies, mm -hmm. 60 feet high in a, uh, in a sort of test. And that's a very good learning tool. That, if anybody had any doubt about the importance of being in focus, they yeah, learn it then. So the movie has these amazing visualizations using Hubble footage. Um, how did those come about? How did you guys construct those? There are two kinds of sequence in the film. There are uh, still images that Hubble has taken, and we, we have two series of those. The first are the, what I would call a classic selection of iconic images, mm -hmm. if you will, that, were, that have been taken over the years. Um, we then m made those into 3D. Um, that was done at the H Space Telescope Science Institute um, by the team there led by Dr. Frank Summers. Then the other kind of sequence was actually flying through the Hubble data sets. And for those, Frank Summers came and joined the team at the National Supercomputing Center in University of Illinois, and that, that's Donna Cox and her team. And there you can take the whole data set, for instance, of the Orion Nebula, which Hubble has captured over many years and perfected. Um, we were able to take that entire data set, which is billions of pixels across, and actually dive into it. They have software there that allows you to dive into the detail and you can choose your flight path by choosing keyframes around the data set. Mm -hmm. And so we together designed a flight path through the, the uh, Stellar Nursery. And we, I wanted to show people uh, the processes by which perhaps our solar system originated. Mm -hmm. And it's all right there in the Orion Nebula. Does the end of the shuttle program mean the end of uh, IMAX films about space? Certainly okay. not. Certainly not. Um, I'm sad that the shuttle program is ending, but we are now at a time when film, per se, is ending. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely at the time, same time as we knew, we've known for years, that we could not progress film-wise to the moon or to Mars because film gets radiated mm -hmm. away from the Earth. So. Uh, we need to be looking at different technologies. So as IMAX has moved into the digital world, uh, so we filmmakers have to do that, mm -hmm. otherwise we wouldn't be able to mm -hmm. capture the imagery. And this film is, is a start in that direction. We, we had a, got a lot of experience in manipulating imagery from other sources, and the key thing is to, to develop an a, a image capture system that is high enough resolution to do something like shoot the Earth, which really requires, you know, 8K or, or better, which is what native IMAX is. 12 million pixels of frame. It's a lot of data storage. Mm -hmm. Right, great. Well, thank you so much, Tony. My pleasure.